Well, hello, everybody. So I got a chance over the night to uh, finish up making the rest of these pictures and um, had to do one for the art class, too. It took a little longer to gain the uh, artwork for hearts and stuff drawn up. Um, in any case, uh, what we want to do now is take a look at how we make a uh, flip flop. So a flip flop is going to be kind of like what we were doing with the latches before. It's going to be a memory unit, and we're actually going to use, if you remember, we ended off with a, uh, a D-enabled latch, and we've got two of them here now. So it, just remember, a D-enabled latch, it has a D input, it's got an enable, it's got, now I'm only grabbing one, the Q output, I'm ignoring the Q prime, and I've got a second latch here that's a D, a D and enable a Q, um, and that's my awesome son. Hi, Carl. Um, and we're hooking them up one into the other. So if you remember, um, the latch did not allow the memory state to change when enable was set low. So um, this one will only be able to change when it's high, and there's an inverter on this. So this one will still only be able to enable when its signal is uh, high, but that will happen when this is low. And then we've just hooked them one into the other. And this is gonna be our, our first scheme to be able to make a uh, memory that will only transition at one point. And what we really want are these edges. We're gonna pick one edge, either what's called a positive edge, where it goes from low to high, or a negative edge, where it goes high to low. And um, as long as you know which one it is, you're totally cool. We'll actually be able to make both types, and we can make different styles do different types. It's easy enough, we just put an inverter in front. In any case, um, you know, the idea of this is to get it so we transition, and we know exactly when it transitions. Because the problem is what I'm showing here. I imagine you've got your clock coming along and we're trying to remove errors and we're trying to make sure we time our calculations. Well, what happens if the input D, right? So this is our time axis going this direction. Um, so maybe I should give a little label to that. Let me grab my pen tool. So time kind of, Thank you. Let me draw another line. All right, so this is the direction of time. All right, so you can see the clock pulse. We want to be able to measure it at this point and at only this point. So at that interval or that particular spot, um, we are we are able to. Uh, uh, measure and it's got a unique value. So um, the D changes high to low, but we want our system not to react to that. In between these intervals here, right, it goes up and down and up, but we don't want it to keep changing. We want to be able to just pick the points where that is because then we can avoid a lot of potential for glitches because these variations are where errors can occur. And if you think of these as kind of like a little downturn glitch, like an error of type one or something, um, you know, if we're using either the positive edges or the negative edges, we'd be able to avoid them because they only sample for an instant. That's why it's so important. All right. Um, in any case, let's imagine for a sec. All right. So I've got here this enable. And we know when enable is low for the way we did our D latch before, um, it won't change. So right now, clock is low. So the input to this going to I is not gonna change. So whatever it was before, let's imagine I initially started out zero from whatever its last value was. I is gonna keep coming in here and it's not gonna make a change until clock goes high. The second clock goes high, it's then able to take its input and D is low at that point, so it's gonna go in. Now it's high at this point. So that means it's gonna respond to whatever is happening here. Oops, 
That was that was a goof on my part. Right at the last sec, my finger slips. Okay, it was low before. It samples. It's low. And it's still sampling high, low. It's hopefully my finger won't slip again. Okay, so that whole time, I'm going to stop at that point. <laughs> um, so I keeps going kind of up and down. So if, you know, when clock is equal to 1, if D is equal to 1, I will become 1. And if at some point D changes to become 0, then rapidly the output Q will become zero. So that's the whole idea. Now, in this case, I ended up on a one. But, you know, that's not really the in, important part for mine. Now, the different thing is that's coming on when you take a look at this little flow. Actually, let's finish off all the ones for um, for I. So right now it's at a one. It transitions, so it's it's reading one on the output. Oops. Okay, I'm gonna have to move that one to the side and pull it back in. Sorry. Okay, it's high and but since clock is low, zero at this instant. So maybe let me let me actually just change this. Actually we're at let's get the exact state that we're at. We were at clock one, right? just before and grab my pen tool and D was one so I was one and then clock goes to zero and the set clock goes to zero it's no longer looking at the input so it actually doesn't matter what X is. I'm going to put an X in here, but it doesn't matter what D is. Okay, I think I'm going to put an X in. Okay, it's a lame X, but at least I got it in. Okay, so I now have my D. It doesn't matter what it is. That's X means either 0 or 1. It's not going to change the output value. So therefore, it stays at the same value. The whole time clock is low. So it was high at the start. It'll be high at the end. And then when it goes high, it now starts following again. And when it goes low, it stops following. Just holds its value. This one back in place, so we now have a nice contiguous, you know, except for a little blip right there, a nice continuous looking little timeline here. So we can now see the plot of the of our voltage or our truth table, right? It's at zero or one. And you can see it only follows the value when clock is high, because clock is what's driving our enable. Now, whenever this is a clock zero. This one is a one. So that means at all the times zero, this one's going to be able to change. So the second one can only change when the first one can't. That's the whole reason for flipping them. <clears throat> so when, remember, whenever it's zero on this side, it's one here, which means this one can go. So in this case, we would see that that one would carry through. 
So this one can only change when that one can't, which means this is held stable. So during all the times when this one can change, this is held stable. It gives you that last bit right at the very end when this one could change. That's what gets in. And then it's held the entire time on its input so that the output doesn't change. So whatever had been there, so I was a zero. So for this whole time when this is zero and this one can change, Q, the output, the whole time it's going to just keep reading that zero. And then when it goes to the value of one here, one on the clock, Tool. That means I've got a zero really coming in. I probably should give myself no box here. So when it's a one here, it's a zero here, which means this is disabled. So this one's not reading at all. So it doesn't matter what that is. This one will hold. So I was zero right at that point, which means it's going to hold all the way across. Maybe it's easier to just redraw that whole thing. Okay, it was zero coming in. It goes to a one, which means it's not enabled. So it goes all the way across. And then it sees its next instant. And its input is now a one when clock is zero. And you can see the clock equals zero up there. So it goes all the way across. And then clock goes to 1, which means the inverse of clock goes to 0. So it becomes enable in it. Actually, it goes. So the only time it can then switch is the next time it switches low. And it reads the input. And it starts going. Ignore that little... All right. That's, that's me drawing badly. I don't want to redraw the whole thing again, though. But you can see Q then has now removed all the other glitches. So the first one removes all the problems when it's zero. And the next one, since it's inverted and sequenced, removes all the stuff when it's high. So it, you end up getting this very nice, clean signal that you know exactly when it is. And if I could draw decently, we would have a downturn at that point. Um, oh, maybe I can. Oh, that looks better. Doesn't bother me. OK. So that gives us our, our nice downturning signal, right? Up, down, over. So we've got a, a good, clean looking signal on it. And that's exactly what we want from a flip flop. So um, that will allow us to trigger this one right here as a negative edge trigger. Um, all I'd have to do is inside whatever you call the dot box, if I put an inversion, um, the interpretations would flip and it would transition on the other end. So just one inverter in front would make it a positive edge. But as it stands for this design, we have a negative edge trigger flip-flop. All right, so that gives you uh, our first one. We're at uh, a little bit over 13 minutes, so that's a good spot to stop the video. And then I will move on to dealing with a slightly more complicated edge triggered flip-flop below. Um, but it has some cool properties too. So we'll talk about both or talk about the second one here. And uh, um, just give me a sec to restart the next video.